All right, definitely got some potential here. It's the inside, okay. Continue your journey without me. What, 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 what are you, what? Somewhere in these arms, I'm on your side. This is the car, this is the track, and this is why you need to pay attention to the road, even on a bike. God, that looked like it hurt. 15 laps of Hockenheim Ring. This is not my race. I decided to spectate a race before I got into a race. Immediately, the two leaders going at each other. And uh, by the way, this is like a four point, I think this was 4.6 K strength of field. Heading towards turn two and car number 18, who's wearing the car number 95 Dynaco McQueen livery going up the inside. This is Matthew. Sorry to call you out, Matthew, but boom, takes out car number four, who goes backwards ends up killing his own teammate, and uh, basically those two guys were the only people to really suffer from that accident. Now heading along the straight towards, what is this, corner number four, they're going three wide, 12 in the middle, and he's gonna make contact with the outside car, they slide out, take all three of each other out there. What the fuck are you doing, fucking idiot? Javier not super happy about that. There was a lot, a lot of uh, moments with Javier this week, to be honest. Car number 11 looking to make a dive on Dynaco McQueen, locking up his brakes, ends up shoving Dynaco McQueen wide, rejoins three wide, kills car number 13. Not really him that did that. 13 just ended up dying in that situation as the middle car tried to leave room for the outside car, made contact with him. A couple of corners later, car number 15 going up the inside of car number 11, and car number 11 just continuing to turn in. It was quite a dive uh, regardless. I don't know. You can make up your own mind about that. Kills car number 15 there, and he rejoins the track, knocks this guy into this guy. Both of the, them go sliding off to the left side, and this is all within lap one, by the way. Car number 18 then rejoins the track after being pushed wide at the hairpin, sliding out into the wall, and uh, moments later, I think this is actually the next lap, car number 11 continuing his reign of terror here, looking up the inside of car number four, ends up punting 23 between four and car number 15, and on lap two that will be a disc or a drive-through which he would rather just not serve so he dqs um car number 11 that is next lap this guy goes sliding out and this was kind of the theme of the whole race basically what i learned is that lap one was terrible for uh, example car number 24 starting in p24 at this race as he crosses the line to start lap number two it's been one lap even though he was involved in accidents he still gains 13 positions from that one lap. So I knew that it would be a matter of surviving lap one. And I messaged Joey that uh, this is basic. This looks absolutely terrifyingly horrible. Joey agreed, of course. He had already done some races at this point. I have not, but I was determined to at least finish a race. Off the bat, shit wasn't looking great, but I... Don't give up that easily. I'm going to go ahead and skip to lap number three of this race. This was the next race we did. I didn't save the replay file for the first one because it was so bad. I just, I basically rage quit. Now we have quite a lot of space behind us and in front of us. Felt like this was going to be a pretty clean run through the hairpin on this lap. Not going to be the case. Here comes Xavi. Hello, Xavi. Uh, making his way through here from about a second back. Don't think he did this on purpose. Doesn't look like it. He locked up his brakes. We just happened to be wrong place, wrong time. Lose about four or five positions from that as we move forward. Actually end up gaining a couple by that car that was spun out. And perhaps there was somebody else. I'm not sure. Side by side with car number 20. Going to let him through here. And then hoping that he moves over. He doesn't. So we move over instead. Looking to possibly go around the outside here. And boom, boom. From behind, we are just going to get punted. Uh, this guy was pretty significantly behind. I wasn't really worried about him going into that corner. I think he was about five or six tenths behind us, or maybe maybe like four or five tenths behind us, but he really just doesn't slow the car down enough. Absolutely ships us off of the track and makes his way around. So that was a pretty devastating couple of corners for us. We rejoined behind Joey, who died earlier that race in uh, P25, or excuse me, P23. I guess some people left right there at the end. Lap number four comes around, and as we make it around the hairpin, 
what do you know? Who is it except for the guy that just killed us um, last lap? About exactly a lap ago. Taking a look at how that happened to him, car number 24 just hits Leandro ahead of him, punts him into car number 16. So really not this guy's fault. He died against his will, to be honest. And we end up passing him right there to claim P22. See you. <laughs> I had to get on the mic for that one. Um, yeah, that was basically the end of that race. We would cross the line there in P18. Basically, just some people would die and we just get free positions like that. Could have been worse. Definitely could have been worse. The high enough strength of field that we didn't lose that much I rating. We did lose some safety rating, though. Whatever. It is what it is. We're going to hop right back into it. We... Like I said, we're not going to give up that easily. Lap number one, here we go. Starting behind Marcin in P11, 15 laps to go, Hockenheim ring. And quite a few people's races are going to unravel right off the bat. Car number four, taking a lot of that curve you can do, but he does get loose on the exit, slides out. Car number one, looking to go behind him. However, he's not holding his brakes. He's going to slide back across the track, back across the track again. We just barely managed not to touch Carol there and end up picking up, uh, I think, two positions from that. However, I believe we lost some on start, so we're not in the greatest place at the moment. We are still in P11. We lost two, gains two. It is what it is. Half a second behind Carol coming into the hairpin. He is going to have to swerve to avoid the car ahead of him, who slowed down quite a lot. We go very deep here, and he looks for the switchback. However, we have just enough speed to kind of maintain our position ahead of him, heading into the next corner. By the time lap number three comes around, the guy ahead of us is going to... I I believe get a slowdown for going too deep there pull over to the side let us through so we move up now into p9 and uh p7 at the end of this race i'm just gonna it, it was basically a dead race from that point honestly there was not anything that happened a couple of people died and we got some freebies and that was that so this race finally a good one that one felt really good p7 happy with that result our lap times not really so happy with definitely have some work to do on my pace so i plan to be running 40s before the end of the week in race however we went green on both i rating and safety rating which is good now into the next race we are starting p8 with a 40.9 for qualifying uh you see the guy at the top doing a 39 6 which is absolutely Absolutely absurd. Nobody else in this lobby was even close to that. So uh, expecting him to take that dub upon launch. It's, you know, it's one of my launches. Car number 11 making use of that going up the inside. We kind of get caught halfway behind, halfway between him alongside him. So we lose a ton of speed from that now. And it looks like we may look at a four wide situation as car number 14. Uh, probably somebody should call CPS on that guy for that crime that he just committed into Corner number two and 16 in the middle of the three wide situation. Going to end up driving off of the track and kind of taking that purple car with him. So we get away scot-free there, following behind car number 14 who went ahead. And uh, we have a really good run here. We're in the slipstream. Should be able to at least attempt to make a move here. He's going to stay semi-defensive line in the middle. We move to the inside for a hyper-offensive line, trying to open it up as much as we can through the braking zone. We are a bit far away from him. This could make our lines clash. Car number three rejoining from the left side there, so almost making it three wide. We actually shy off of the throttle, just barely there to uh, allow everybody space. And coming through the next corner, we funnel back behind car number 14 who is looking to make a move up the inside of car number three here. And is it going to stick side by side? They go. It looks like uh, the Martini racing car claiming the inside for the next corner. And he's going to end up backing out. However, he gets a pretty decent run for how tight of a line he had there. Not quite going to be able to maintain the position. So 14 goes through and three moves backwards in between us. And uh, yeah, we kind of stay exactly where we were. Now, I had to check out what happened here because I heard somebody on the mic. Car number 16 making a move similar to what 14 did. I would say that that's a clean move. You're an idiot. What if I take the line I Interesting thing to say considering the line he quote unquote should have taken had a car there. Regardless, we come across to start lap number two, both car number 14 and myself driving wide on the final exit. And it looks like Scott in car number three looking up the inside of turn one, not quite going to make it work. Smart on him to back out and avoid the contact there. It's going to slow both of them down, though. We move to the inside, heading towards turn number two. And uh, this will should give you the position most of the time. However, as we saw on lap one, it kind of kills your run. Car number 14 did the same thing on lap one, and we ended up getting a really good run and uh, throwing a move down towards towards the end of the straight at the hairpin. So similar things gonna happen here. He's got the slipstream. We're gonna start moving out pretty early, try and beat him to the outside 
uh, or technically the inside, I suppose, for the hairpin, taking a super defensive line. He's right behind us, and uh, we're going to stay defensive all of the way through the hairpin. Car number three going super deep to look for a good cutback. However, we go super deep and cut off his exit. Car number 14 goes underneath us, and we are side by side as we head towards the super fast sweeping right-hander, trying to allow him space and somehow still end up making contact. I think there was just too much space between our cars. As the inside car there, you do need to get as close to the outside car as possible to make sure your lines don't um, don't clash like that. He takes that inside curb, and then we end up making contact. I suppose I could have backed out there, but I don't think that it was necessary for me to. Getting the car stopped just about barely on the apex. Everybody gets through cleanly. We lose two positions, uh, but we gain one, so I guess we technically only lost one which is great. Sitting in P12, Scott now finds himself side by side with Kim, who's on the outside. Car number 10 looking up the inside uh, towards us, but he's going to end up backing out. And it looks like Kim dropped behind Scott as well. And the car behind us now finds himself almost under attack from 21, but he's gonna funnel behind. It's uh, not really worth it to go side by side through that chicane for the potential amount of time that you lose, not really during the chicane, but through this, this like final sector of the track. Going side by side through here will absolutely fuck your lap up so uh smart by car number 21 to do that lap number four comes around and we are still putting pressure onto car number 17 as we make our way through the hairpin for the fourth time it looks like scott actually locks up 17 reacts to it slowing down a little bit probably lifting we find ourselves side by side trying to get as close to him as we can here we do make a little bit of contact luckily that didn't turn out in any sort of worse way cutting ahead of him just barely and we throw on our brakes. He does not quite. I think we did break a little bit early. Regardless, it hits us, sends us into Scott in a straight line. We absolutely murder Scott. I did apologize to him for that, and uh, he was a very forgiving person. So unfortunate accident there, and once again, we find ourselves on this part of the track, which is not really part of the track, and once again, at the back of the pack. Not totally able to make that one up. Uh, as a matter of fact, we didn't even finish that race. So really negative for us. We ended up taking like 14 incident points up until the point you saw, and then we had three off tracks, which will give us a, uh, or four off tracks. Yeah, we had a drive through, whatever. We move on, we keep trucking, and this time we're starting P7 behind car number 14, the same guy from last race, as Joey is right behind us as well. So lap number one, let's fucking get it, 15 laps to go, and it's basically the exact same people. I mean, Scott is right ahead of us as well, so we are almost in the exact same group. Joey with a monstrous launch, car number eight looking up the inside of us, car number 12 trying to follow him through, ends up uh, going side by side with car number 11, and everybody makes it through the first corner beautifully, which is super nice. We are on the outside heading towards corner two with car number eight on the inside. We could try and make this a two wide situation through the chicane. However, it kills your run onto the straight and probably puts both of us at a disadvantage relative to the cars behind us. So I'm gonna funnel in behind him. Just look to uh, soak up slipstream, settle back into the pack, potentially make a move. I wasn't initially wanting to make a move here, but the guy behind me was so close that if I didn't make a move, on car number eight, he was gonna make a move on me. So I moved to the inside more to defend than to uh, go on the attack of this guy. Uri up ahead, driving straight off the track. And then that was terrifying to see in my rear view mirrors, but this was nice as basically there's nobody behind me. So what happened there, we're gonna break it down. Car number 14, locking up his brakes. Fortunately, nobody gets hit from that. Car number 13, don't really know what's going on here. It almost feels like he gets back onto the throttle, ships car number eight out there, and car number 14, as he is rejoining, gets jump scared by him, makes contact. Massive gaggle here, that kind of broke down because car number 12 looks to take advantage, goes deep. Car number 10, not really wanting to use his brakes so much. He's also getting pushed from behind, didn't have much of an option. Car number 14, rejoining the track, cutting it, and that guy gets absolutely spit roasted, screaming as he spins into the barrier, almost kills car number eight as uh, with a pretty, pretty aggressive rejoin there and that was basically lap one we survived all of it which is super nice it's the main thing you need to do on this track this track is an absolute death trap and it is largely because of that hairpin after the extremely long straight that causes all of that but we have survived we have 1.6 seconds behind us joey is kind of settling back into the group ahead of us so we've got scott joey and then Grakjan. i'm not quite sure how to say that guy's name and it looks like scott is going to make a move just about or at least trying to show himself in the mirrors of Joey not going to get it done there and I was kind of expecting him to just settle down after that however he kind of shows in the mirrors once again goes a bit deep uh cuts back it's it's a fine line to take it's just one that's he, he's obviously trying to show some sort of pressure to Joey or he just missed his braking marker and turned in early not quite sure but uh by the time lap number five comes around 
Joey and Scott still ahead of us. We've got six seconds to the car behind us. So every, I mean, we're driving some pretty solid laps here, feeling confident in our little bubble that we found ourselves in, our survivor island. We're kind of on the end of that island, just barely the last one to make it out alive. Doesn't look like Joey had the best run through corners two and three as we head down towards, I think it's actually corner five is the hairpin because this parabolica kind of counts as a corner, I believe. Scott is pretty close behind, looking to make a move. He's moving to the inside of the hairpin, probably going to try and break a little bit later. And yes, he does find himself alongside Joey from this position. Best move to make is the switchback. He's gonna try and get it, at least get a better exit. And it looks like he has achieved that. So he finds himself side by side head, heading into the sweeping right. You can see how close he gets there to open it up for basically both of them, just to make that corner easier for both of them. Side by side into the next corner. Tough one to go side by side through here. You can definitely make it work. Either car can come out ahead, but Joey opts to slide back behind in this situation. And uh, Scott gets that move done. So a two, two or three move or two or three corner move, but eventually does get the job done. We now find ourselves behind Joey and uh, Joey is not relinquishing the pressure from Scott so quickly. Skipping ahead to lap number eight, we've spread out a little bit as much as I think we would like to fight. And I'm sure Joey wants to make a move on Scott at the same time. Like you've seen, this track has been an absolute death sentence for everybody involved. So to be in a situation like this, we're in the top seven, uh, we got space either direction, eight seconds behind us. I think we just wanna finish the race cleanly. Joey does cut that corner, the final corner, just a little bit too much, gives him a penalty. He's gonna pull over to serve that down the, uh, the starting straight. And as we cross onto lap number nine, we will move forward into P6. And happiness is relative, so is being contentness. I don't know the correct term for that, but I'm happy with this because my previous races have just been diabolically bad. So P6, it's a gift from the gods at the moment. And, um, as the laps went on, that really wouldn't change much at all. Lap number 13, we only have two more laps after this one to get anything done, not planning on getting anything done. However, car number three looking for P3, stealing it from car number five, who finds himself on the outside of the hairpin. Three up the inside, gonna make that work. Five getting a really good exit, going deep, cutting back for uh, basically allowing himself to get onto the throttle quicker. It's a slower line, but it gives you a better exit. And uh, plus the slipstream, he is right on this guy's tail. Doesn't look like he's gonna go for a move here. I think he actually lifts off a bit, potentially looking for a move in the final sector of the track. If you get a good run here, it's definitely possible to make it work through that final hairpin. And uh, upon his exit, gets a little bit of oversteer. It is amplified by getting his car up onto that curb and he's going to slide out, which will end up giving a position to both Scott and myself. I move up into P5. Joey behind, not quite so lucky. As he comes through, Eduardo is just rejoining the track. Eduardo is the driver in the number five car, by the way. Joey looking to make a move or at least apply a little bit of pressure with a nice switch back on car number five. He has the outside for the carousel slash hairpin. Not quite sure, doesn't want to take it. It's not a great move to make. If you're in desperation, it's possible, but um, most of the time that's going to go to the inside car and the guy in car number five, Eduardo, fantastic driver, really quick, gonna be difficult for Joey to catch him. By the time the final lap comes around, we're still kind of on our island and we will end up crossing the line here with three seconds ahead, three seconds behind in P5. Still not where I really want to be. My pace isn't where I really want it to be at this point. It's still the beginning of this week though when these races happen, so I wasn't disappointed with that. At least we finished, which is great. Here are the results. Finishing in P5, Eduardo behind us, Joey behind him. Scott, great drive to him as well. As far as the ratings were, I'm happy with them. We didn't really lose any safety rating, which was great. We have absolutely plummeted in safety rating. Pace-wise, we have a ways to go. Uh, Five, about half of a second still off of the faster guy in this lobby. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out my channel. It helps a ton.